everyone, my name is Zhang Fang, and major is material science and engineering. My instructor for this class on clean energy technology is Professor Saki P. Young. Today, I will discuss the impact of proton exchange membrane on power generation. My presentation has five parts, introduction, experimental conditions, experimental results, the disadvantages of microbial fuel cells, no proton exchange membrane, useful reason. First, why study the effect of the proton exchange membrane on power production? Fuel cells that use bacteria are divided into two different types, biofuel cells, need mediators, and microbial fuel cells, no need mediators. The mediatorless microbial fuel cells are considered to have more commercial application potential than biofuel cells because the mediators used in biofuel cells are expensive and toxic to the microorganisms. However, microbial fuel cells with proton exchange membrane have some disadvantages. The main disadvantage of a two-chamber microbial fuel cell is that the solution cathode must be aerated to provide oxygen to the cathode. It is known that the power output of microbial fuel cells can be improved by increasing the efficiency of the cathode. Therefore, to study the effect of the proton exchange membrane on power production, we compared power density for glucose and wastewater feeds with the system in the presence and absence of a polymeric proton exchange membrane. Next, we discuss air cathode microbial fuel cell construction. The microbial fuel cells consisted of an anode and cathode placed on opposite sides in a plastic. The anode electrodes were made of carbon paper. The carbon electrode proton exchange membrane cathode was manufactured by bonding the proton exchange membrane directly onto a carbon cloth electrode. And then, in this experiment, bacteria present in domestic wastewater were used as the biocatalyst, and glucose and wastewater were tested as substrates. Next, we talk about experimental conditions. 1. The anode chamber was repeatedly filled with wastewater until colonized the electrodes and produced electricity. 2. The chamber was refilled when the voltage decreased to less than 50 millivolts. 3. Experiments were conducted in a constant temperature room. Next, experimental results, electricity generated from wastewater. We can see figure A with proton exchange membrane. Stable power generation was obtained after only two sequential transfers. This pattern of voltage output was reproducible when fresh wastewater was added into the fuel cell. Next, we can see figure B, no proton exchange membrane. Stable power generation using the microbial fuel cells without a proton exchange membrane bonded to the carbon cathode took longer. However, after 140 hours operation, a consistent maximum voltage could be achieved for 0.32 volt. So, microbial fuel cells without proton exchange membrane produces 5.2 times the power density of microbial fuel cells with proton exchange membrane. 
Next, electricity generated from glucose in the carbon electrode microbial fuel cells containing it with proton exchange membrane. A maximum of 0.35 volt was obtained, with the power slowly dropping to 0.25 volt over the next 95 hours and then sharply decreasing over the next 5 hours. In the microbial fuel cells without a proton exchange membrane, a maximum of 0.52 volt was generated with the voltage rapidly decreasing to low levels within 20 hours. Next, power density as a function of circuit resistance to determine what load resistance would produce the maximum power density. The circuit resistance was varied from 150 to 5000 ohm with glucose as the substrate. When the load resistance is 465 ohm, the maximum power of the microbial fuel cells without proton exchange membrane reaches 494 milliwatts per square meter. When the load resistance is 218 ohm, the power generated by the microbial fuel cells with proton exchange membrane is 262 milliwatts per square meter. Next, electrode potential. To further examine the effect of the proton exchange membrane on power generation, we measured the open circuit potential and the working potentials. The open circuit potential and working potentials of the anodes were found to be quite similar, despite the presence or absence of a proton exchange membrane. And then, there were significant differences in the open circuit potential and working potentials of the cathode in the presence and absence of a proton exchange membrane. This voltage difference could be a result of several different factors. First, by removing the proton exchange membrane, decreased the internal resistance. Second, Heating the proton exchange membrane and cathode to bond them together caused carboxylation and degeneration of the catalyst. Third, the catalyst content on cathode with proton exchange membrane was higher than without the proton exchange membrane. Next, biofilms on electrodes, as shown, Biofilms formed on both electrodes. Bacteria growing on the anode appeared to be somewhat uniform in morphology, and many bacteria grew as chains. In contrast, the biofilm that grew on the cathode was much more heterogeneous. The above are some important experimental results. Although power density was found to be much greater than typically reported for aqueous cathode microbial fuel cells, but the microbial fuel cells without a proton exchange membrane have some disadvantages. The main disadvantage is the potential for the loss of substrate due to aerobic oxidation by bacteria in the anode chamber. However, microbial fuel cells may still play a role in wastewater treatment. Next, microbial fuel cells may still be useful in wastewater treatment. For what reason? First, the organic matter in a wastewater is free. Thus, its loss to aerobic processes is not intrinsically a problem as such a loss accomplishes wastewater treatment. Second, it is likely that losses due to oxygen diffusion can be reduced either through improvements in coatings on the side of the cathode exposed to the chamber, or perhaps through continued biofilm development.
Third, the system described here is not optimized with respect to anode and cathode relative surface areas and other factors that might change or reduce the surface area needed for the cathode. In the end, there are three questions about this article, comma, one. What is the main disadvantage of using microbial fuel cells without proton exchange membrane? 2. What is the most likely reason for the low columbic efficiency? 3. What are the two factors that reduce the cost of making microbial fuel cells? I'm finished. Thank you for you watching.